Hi Rashid here, welcome to another video. Um, today we are going to look into standards library. I mentioned in a couple of videos ago that one of the major inputs to synthesis tool and actually not only synthesis but to uh, implementation like uh, um, implementation stage or routing stage, CTS stage and then of course timing verification and then also power verification. A very important component is standard cell library okay. so what is standard cell library why we need standard cell library why we have standard cells so the thing is in physical design uh, you're not going to um, create a layout of individual gears you will not go all the way to transistor level of course your final chip will be in the form of transistors interconnected together and different transistors together um, with the different combination and they make up gates but at in physical design you stay your lowest um, cell or your lowest device that you deal with is actually a gate not the transistor that is important thing so these uh, these gates are already created and one a different version, for example, and all the basic gates, all the we think of that, okay, your design can be converted uh, to, or so, sorry, can be synthesized to some of the basic gates. And those could be, I mean, I'm not showing here inverter buffer. Um, I'm probably not showing a lot of other cells here, but I'm just showing just example of, okay, we already have and, um, look at that, and, so, so the whole goal is, okay, one second, I get, get there. Uh, so the whole goal is uh, you have a collection of a lot of cells of in each, each type of cells with different variants available to the synthesis tool, to the placement tool, to the routing tool, to the CTS tool, such that the tools can pick the one that best suits for the constraints on that particular path. Okay, so let's say tool has is is looking into um, converting an RTL a system very log into gates. So then it look at okay there are two flops and those two flops are running at two gigahertz. And in order to meet timing of two gigahertz between those two flops, the cells for example the combinational cells used um, as well as the flip-flops used they need to be such that they meet timing so a tool going to go and look into standard cell library and going to pick some cells and it needs to have more option the more option it has the better the more freedom it has to pick the cell that it really needs so let's say it wants to pick an AND gate so you have two input AND gate. So we want to have a cell, two input AND gate which has, um, you know, the width of the transistor is very small. So overall, this transistor is very small. Yeah, I'm assuming all the transistor in a sense library have the same length, um, which is a process node, but the width is the one that varies. Okay, so you can have a two input AND gate with the lowest possible width then you have another one which is double that width another bigger width bigger width so looking at each end gate uh, you can have different size and when i put here only four there could be like um, um, 50 of those okay uh, because then you give more options but as, as also it comes at the cost of more cells in the library more cells in the library means more work has to be done the library team so all these cells are actually, uh, just, you know, there, there's a library team uh, in that particular process node. Okay, so Foundry has that library team and they decide, uh, okay, what are different based on the legacy, based on, okay, how many cells they need to have, what optimum count is, what optimum variety of different cells is in order to give uh, tools more freedom and better way to optimize so they pick a number of different types that they need different ways they need to have 
and what they do let's say they pick first this one so they will create a, a detailed layout of this one actual layout they will connect different masses together um, on certain metal layers they will create the layout and then they will extract the resistance and capacitance within the layout and they will simulate it so they will literally take it into supply simulator and measure the exact delays power and other things and then for example initially they want to create um, timing view so a standard library can have um, different views the views mean the different files that it can generate so that's a standard library team wants to create timing views and typically timing and power they come in one file and that file is called a dart lib file and dot ldb file so within dart lib file so what what um, um, uh, sensor library team does they actually pick each cell and this they simulate that in spice when they simulate in spice they of course vary some of the inputs just fix the load at the output and we will look into the the timing segment and i'll show you what kind of thing they vary but let's say they they know what things to vary what things they need to simulate and check the output and then they put that timing information into a file and that file is dartlib so dartlib is a huge file that has uh, timing information uh, and power information they typically come in one for each of these cells for different version of that cell and then they do it for each and different version of type of cell so there's a lot of cell typically almost about 2000 cells in a library and those can be very small like in water buffer there can be and those can be multiplexer there can be uh, full adders and there could be other cells they try not to make much bigger cells so cells is really the core the basic level you got that now in this picture i'll just show you just quickly my point was to take you to to this level this is the really the level here but the other abstraction levels you know you typically start at architecture where your instructions are written in the form of assembly language then micro architecture is what different block diagrams at a higher level you create to in order to implement that instruction and this can vary you know different people can come up with a different micro architecture different way they connect different elements together in order to make um, the processor execute this instruction then we get into an rtl abstraction level where everything is written all these are implemented and eventually in the form of hdl it can be system very log very log or vhdl and then this design come and then synthesis tool uses the library as an input and then it creates a net list which is really the connection of all these type of different cell whatever a circuit needs or a path needs and it's a combination of them connected together so then if you look at this is our full adder so full adder has exclusive two exclusive r's uh, two n's and one r so what happens is this when um, let's say this design goes through uh, layout layout of this standard cell is already done finished it's already available in a file and those files can be uh, left for dev for milky way frame views and it really depends on the tool it's not an all formats but a particular tool particular tool that you use for layout in physical design it will require in one of these formats so standard cell library just like a dart lib it provides another file which has all the layout so the layout inside physical design tool they don't create a layout of inside they what i've highlighted here they only create a layout for these segments so you can see that the active devices, the transistor layout is not what physical design tool creates. It basically take those boxes from the file. They know what is their X, what is their Y, where the pins are located and all that. And then they all they do is they connect them together. So key thing for a physical implementation tool is to pick the right type of cell for that particular path. Um, find out exactly where they need to place those ones relative to each other second and the third one is how to uh, put actual metals when connected them metals when again we talk in detail in routing but 
uh, it needs to look at what metals has higher resistance, low resistance, higher capacitance, lower capacitance. And based on that and based on how much timing is going through the circuit and how much you need to optimize, then it picks right um, a type of metals. And the size, I mean, size depends on how far they are up, apart. So transistors again, it pretty much a black box. It's, it's a done, done design. But that information, it needs physical implementation and um, as well as physical verification tools. They need to know what is the information inside. And for that, sensors team create different views. As I already mentioned, timing and power, which I will show in the next video as an example, is, is in the dot .lib format. This is a text and this is binary. And layout can be in a particular format. Similarly, the dot .v, the netlist are also provided. Um, they are used by formal equivalence verification tools when they compare the dot .v. Uh, against against uh, the RTL uh, because you definitely need the functionality of these guys right and also you need uh, in the verification somebody wants to simulate the center cells uh, then you need uh, the models okay what's the functionality of these uh, sensor library also provides spice models if somebody wants to simulate a portion of the seg um, of the segment in physical design then they can use spice models for these and they can extract them with the resistance capacitance of the wires. Then they can simulate that. And similarly, some other formats are also provided, but these are typically more common. Okay, uh, hope I, I gave a good idea of standard cell. Uh, and in the next video, I will explain the dot lib format um, and what information is available inside for just taking an example standard cell. Until then, um, have a good time.